Spiritually Dead or Alive, Part 3 of the Spirit, Soul, and Body series. Okay, so we've looked at Parts 1 and 2. We saw that the Spirit, Soul, and Body uh, exist. There's three parts to a person. We saw that our soul, uh, when God breathed the breath of life into a Adam, that he became a living soul. We saw the soul as the connection to the physical world. It's how we view the world, it's how we function, it's how we observe the world. However, the spirit is our connection to God. It's how we know God and how we, we relate to him. So there's a definite distinction between the soul and the spirit and of course the, the body, which is made up of flesh, uh, bone, blood, and other things. Um, so the purpose of this study is to look at salvation, is to look at what happens at the moment of salvation. And we're gonna find that we're made spiritually alive. We're, we're, our spirits were spiritually dead and they become alive. Okay, so let us look at the spiritual death uh, of humankind. And we, we know from uh, the Garden of Eden where God had warned Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that they would eat of it, in that day, um, not the following day, not a week from then, not 50 years from then, not hundreds of years from then, but in the day they eat of it, they were to die. But we know that they didn't die physically. Their soul didn't die. They were still a functioning creature. But in that day, they, they became spiritually dead because they disobeyed God and, and they lost that connection to God. And we see that evidence in Genesis chapter 3 that they hid themselves. They, they knew they were naked. They knew they had sinned and they hid themselves from God. They, they, they lost that that, that intimate connection with God. Um, so, um, also that, that sin, as well as we're going to see on an uh, upcoming slide, was passed on to all creation. And we also say, see that the body was to die because of that sin, but that would be future. You know, man would live his life on earth with a living body and soul, but it would also, the, the, the original sin caused the fact that there is physical death too, and that's in Genesis 3.19. And of course, the soul that sins shall die, uh, that's Ezekiel chapter 18. But So it's important to see that the original sin caused spiritual death, um, and physical death it was caused also, but that occurs later. And the soul that sins we know shall die, and it will be judged on, on Judgment Day. And we, we will talk about that in much more detail on an upcoming study. Okay, so just to look at spiritual death, uh, and it occurs in the womb. Um, it's, it's from the original sin from Adam and Eve. Wherefore, if by one man sin entered into the world, that was Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So Adam, uh, he, the whole creation, including Adam and Eve, they fell that day and they, they, the, because of sin, and that sin was inherited by, by all of us that were all descended from Adam and Eve. So that's why all we've all and that's why it's called the original sin and we've inherited that sin. And we see in Psalm 51 for example the psalmist records I was shapen in iniquity which is sin and in sin did my mother conceive me. Sin is all about the physical creation. The whole creation is is lost. Even the 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 beautiful creation of a human being in the womb even that is done in sin. Um, the wicked are estranged from the womb. It happens right in the womb. A, a baby's not born innocent. A baby already has that inherited sin nature in the womb. Who can bring an, a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. It's not possible that you can have holiness that comes out of something that's not holy. Only holiness comes from God. And again, there is none righteous, no, not one, Romans chapter 3. So again, the original sin is when we all, every human being that's ever existed, became spiritually dead, except for Jesus Christ, because he was sinless. But other than Jesus Christ, all human beings that ever lived are um, have experienced spiritual death in their lives. Okay, other uh, Bible verses that are important um, that just keep testifying to the fact that before we're saved, we're spiritually dead. You can find some of these in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, and we're going to read Ephesians 2 on the next slide. 
And we, but we see we're dead because of trespasses and sins. Again, it's that original sin. And we're commanded to arise from the dead. So it's not to arise from physical death. It's to arise from our spiritual death. Um, even Jesus, just an interesting passage in Matthew 8, he commanded his disciples to follow, follow me, follow Christ, and let the dead, that wasn't the physical dead, that's the spiritual dead, bury their dead, their physical dead that die. Um, so anyway, there's, there's several verses, there's more on the website, but just suffice it to say that before we become a Christian, everybody is spiritually dead. We're, we're physically alive, our souls are alive, but we're spiritually dead. Okay, so now we're going to look at seven ways that the Bible describes um, uh, how we're made spiritually alive. Okay, we're going to look at those in the, the this, uh, seven slides and understand um, just they, they build upon each other, but it, became, it makes it so clear in the Bible. So the first verse, which uh, passage is Ephesians chapter 2. Um, and we've been quickened, we've been made alive, who were dead, we were dead in trespasses and sins, and that's spiritual death. And we walked according to the, the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan. So everybody walks in sin because we're in a flesh body. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us, made us alive together with Christ. So it's all God's work. And it's by grace that we're saved. God is the one. A dead man can't make himself wake up. A dead man can't make himself alive. It's all God's work. God gives us the faith of Christ. God gives us the faith that we, we need for salvation. And we're going to look at several other um, verses on this. Okay, one of the most famous ways we're described uh, as becoming alive spiritually is to be born again. The famous passage of Jesus and Nicodemus in John chapter 3, except a man be born again or born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't be saved. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. We're born of the Spirit because our spirit is dead and we need to be made spiritually alive. And, and that's God's work. And that's what it means to be born again. We're not physically born again. Our soul is not born again. It's our spirit that's born again. And there's more passages in First Peter that, that, that talk about the same thing. We're born again because of the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ that, that, that has accomplished the work that was necessary to, 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 for us to be born again. Okay, another uh, way it's described in the Bible to be made spiritually alive is to be raised or resurrected from the dead. Um, and again, this applies to people that are physically alive, their souls are alive, but they need to be raised with Christ. And we, we see in Colossians 2 uh, that we're buried with him. The bat water baptism is symbolic of what happens to a person being spiritually reborn. We're bur buried with Christ in baptism, wherein also we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of, of God. Again, it's by the resurrection of Christ that we're raised, we're made to, we're raised from the dead, the spiritual death that we have. Um, Colossians chapter 3, Romans chapter 6, we're raised to walk in newness of life. And again, we've been raised up together and made uh, to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're one with Christ because we've been raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Okay, another way it's explained, and again, there's seven of these, these ways that the Bible, at, at least seven. There, there may be others, but these, there's seven ways that this is described. Another way it's described is that we have a new spirit. Um, and the, the most simplest passage to read on this is, are those passages in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 11, 18, and 36. It's very clear the scripture says that people are that, who are to be saved, that are going to be God's people, God puts a new spirit in them. And the reason he puts a new spirit in them is that they're spiritually dead and they need, need, need to be made spiritually alive. Um, so those passages are, are, are available. And again, there's more on this on the website. But um, be get, given a new spirit is another way that this is described. Okay, um, another way, the new man versus the old man. And we see that the old man was crucified with Christ. 
Um, and, and the new man is raised with Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, we're to put off the old man, which is corrupt due to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We have to have a new spirit that you would, so that we put on the new man, which is after God created in righteousness. The, the purpose of that is that we're saved spiritually. Our spirits are saved. We're, we're born again. And we're to, we're, to, we're to now walk in the power of God. We, we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us. And we, we, can, we can be righteous. We can, we can be holy. Um, and finally, in Colossians chapter 3, you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. It's renewed in knowledge, the new man, because we have that spirit connection with God again. Our, we're spiritually awakened, and we now have the knowledge of God. Okay, we're also called a new creation. Um, just in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, um, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation or a new creature. Old things are passed away, because all things are made new. We're a new creation in Christ. We're, we're recreated spiritually. We're not recreated physically. It's the same body we had before we became a Christian. It's the same soul we had. It's the same connection we have with the world. The difference is, is that we're, 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 we're a new creation because we are spiritually born again. We have a new spirit. We're raised from the spiritual death that we are in. Just as Lazarus, Lazarus was raised from the dead and, and made alive, so too we're, we're raised from the dead and our spirits are, are born again and, and made alive again. Okay, another uh, method of des describing this salvation experience of being spiritually made al alive is that we're given a new heart. Um, or the stony heart we had before that was impervious to the Word of God and impervious, our connection to God again was broken. But we have a soft heart. We're given a heart of flesh. We have a new heart, Ezekiel 18 says. God will write his law on the, his people's hearts because we are spirit is made alive we have that spirit connection with God again that he can now he puts his law on our, our hearts we love God it's it's in our hearts and that's the word of God of course that we're the holy and the holy spirit indwells us and we're going to talk about that in the next study but uh, the, when the holy spirit indwells us we 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 have a teacher we have a a counselor we have a guide we have a someone that leads us through this life and 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 grows us into spiritual maturity Okay, just a quick summary. So prior to salvation, we're all spiritually dead. Every human being except for Jesus Christ is spiritually dead or was spiritually dead. And after one is saved, they're made spiritually alive. And that's described in those seven ways that we just covered. We're made alive. Okay, so before we were dead, now we're made alive. We're born again. We're raised or resurrected to a new life. We're a new man, we have a new spirit, we're a new creation in Christ, we have a new heart. The hardness of our heart is gone and now we have a soft heart that's pliable and God writes his law in our heart. So it's a beautiful, a beautiful picture of what it means to be saved. The verses we covered here, and there's more on the website, are, are worth studying, memorizing them, hiding them into your heart. Um, in part four, we're going to go on and we're going to look at the relationship between our spirit and the Holy Spirit, what happens at salvation, and how our spirit works together with the Holy Spirit.